Welcome to this video where I'll be focusing on visualizing Landsat data in uh, QGIS. So if you remember from a previous video where we left off with um, USGS, where we had found um, this image here from the 25th of August 2019. This was a cloud-free image of Roskilde and Copenhagen and school. And um, we had downloaded and we had uh, chosen to download all of these files here. So we have this, I've done this and um, I have received a zip file that I have um, unzipped into a folder and I'm now ready to load this in uh, QGIS. So um, if um, I want to go to my browser and here you can see I have this folder here. This was the folder that I downloaded. And you can see that, that in this folder is some uh, text files um, that we can um, read some information about the files. And then there's a lot of TIFF files that are, you can rem perhaps remember from um, our Landsat image where we um, had the different bands. So let's see if I can switch over to finding them. So here we had these different bands. So we had band four, which is um, the red, band three, which is a green, band two, which is a blue band. So all of these bands are now represented as these small um, TIFF files in my folder here. So band four, should be equal my red band. So if I can normally drag it onto my canvas, you see this uh, somewhat hazy gray image. So it's not red. It's um, it's what it is. It is reflecting how much red light that was reflected from the surface of the earth. So where we have high values here, let's zoom in here. We here we have lots of red light. In this case, we also probably have lots of green light and blue light and so on, because these are uh, gravel pits. There will be a lot of um, of quartz that reflects very efficiently in basically all wavelengths. So this is um, our data. It's also very hazy because it's not been what we call contrast stretching. And that's one of those things you should always be aware of when you work with uh, image data, is that you typically want to do some form of enhancement. And the first thing you do is that you want to stretch your image. So if you go to properties of your layer, and then we have, this is shown as a single band gray, and um, it has a minimum and maximum, but down here there's a minimum and maximum value settings. At the moment it's set, to the minimum maximum of the whole image. What we typically want to do is that we want to say, okay, I don't want all of it. Typically in image data, there is the top 1% and the bottom 1% is noise and not really useful. So we'll cut that off. So we'll focus on the 98% in the middle. We can also do some mean value plus standard deviations. And I don't want to have it calculated for all of the image because especially on satellite data, there's often some clouds hanging around in a corner or some data errors or something like it. So we'll have it set to this update canvas. That means that each time I move the canvas around, it will update the contrast stretching. So it will always try and stretch to what I see on my screen. Once that's set, note what happens to my image in the background. It becomes much clearer because now it is stretching the image to those values that are within this range that I'm seeing here. And um, if I now move around, I uh, don't want to do that. Um, let's take the hand. Uh, and you can see if I move out into this that area where it's darker, you can see all the lights become much more light. And if I find somewhere where there's no land, like here, 
what happens is that it contrasts to access that black area. And I see all of these patterns, which basically is algae's in the water. And we can see ships and how the wake after the ship has stirred the water. So you'll get some um, clean water from deeper up to the surface. That's why we have these black lines after the ships. So contrast touching means that whenever you see now, I'm over land, it's completely white because I haven't let my mouse go yet. As soon as I let my mouse go, it will contrast switch to this area here. So contrast switching is really a real, one of those basic things you always have to do when working with image data. Oh, we wanted a color image. And um, if we uh, go for, um, so these are all our different bands. If what we wanted to do, that we wanted to have a red, green, and a blue band. So in this case, we had red, four, green, three, blue, two. And we wanted to load them in into a um, common image, color image. It's not quite as we would expect. So you might say, okay, let's uh, drag in band three and band two. And of course, what happens is that this puts the layers on top of each other, and that's not very fun. So what we have to do is that we have to do a little trick. Uh, so I'll just get rid of my bands here. And um, this trick is called a virtual raster. What we can do is that we can, a virtual raster is a raster file that is referencing to some existing files, just the, pretending that they are one file. So what we want to do is we, have, we want to create one raster file that is referencing to all those raster images or raster layers that is the satellite imagery. So although I can do this type of thing up from my raster menu, it will be under Mesh and Mnist and Build vir Virtual Raster, I almost always prefer to use the processing toolbox uh, because here I can browse around and I can also find if I know that it's called something with virtual I can start typing some of the words and it will find that tool for me so in the virtual um, mapping tool here we will um, just uh, have a closer look at what that dialog box is saying so we have an input where we can put our layers in. So here I can uh, add a folder. That's where I have all my image data. And um, there's lots of layers here. Some of them I don't want. Some of them have come. These aux files here, they have come because I've had those layers open already. You can see it's these layers that I loaded before. So first of all, I want to get rid of the two text files. And I want to get rid of all these aux files that I created before. So get rid of those. Then there is a really annoying thing about um, this tool. That is that once I load it, um, but they, they will be... I'll lose the original name, so they will just be called band one, two, three, in that order they appear here. So this one, band one will be band one, but my band two will be band ten, my band three will be band eleven. So I'll have to make sure that my data is organized. That's also another thing that I have to be aware of. That is, if you remember from our slide here, that band eight was a panchromatic band with a higher resolution than the other bands. And a virtual raster always has to have the same resolution. It will take the average. I don't want to do too much manipulation. So I also want to get rid of band 8 for my collection. Um, so, and to be quite honest, I'll just get rid of... Um, well, we can move them down. So I'll just move... Band 10, and actually I can drag the layers around so I can make the ordering. 
So band one, band two, band three, band four, band five, band six, band seven, skip band eight, band nine. This is some quality assessment band, don't want that there. I don't want that band at all. Um, band nine, band oh, 10 and 11. Okay, so I've got all my bands listed up now. Um, my band, these bands will get wrong numbers. Um, so I'll just to make life easier, I don't need them now. I'll just also take them off. So I'll just get my bands one to seven in the right order with the right names. So okay to this, hopefully. And that's basically what I have to do. Oops, I apparently didn't do this right. So if you got something wrong, simply because you have a text file, see I had a text file sticking around. Band one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Good. So now it's fine and I've got my data set and I'll just close it. And again, you say this somewhat wishy washy, uh, gray color thing. So, first of all, we want to change what we see. So, I'll go to layers and I go to its properties. And here in I'm in symbology, design what is my red band. So, if we remember. So red was band four, and it's also named not band four here. In my little set. So it'll be band four, band three, and band two. So red, green, and blue. I'll make sure that my contrast stretching is again set to top one percent of the top. Up there, and I want to do it with my updatable region there. And I'll say OK. So now it changed to C was blue. Now if I still look very hazy because I'm displaying the whole image and there's probably some small clouds or data errors hanging around that will spoil my stretching. But as soon as I zoom in on it uh, like this, you can see that the color stretching takes place. And I am um, can now have look at my my images. See if I stretch look in here, it will stretch further onto these areas down here. And again, as before, if I uh, move around, so let's say I go out and look into the fuel or to who booked here. See if I can find I don't see any that you can see again all of these different patterns from the algae um in the water and you also see uh, how the sand effects here, and we have the windmills and the and the fairies as before. So now I have a what is generally known as a true color composite. So I have combined the three bands, red, green, and blue, to the red, green, and blue colors on my monitor. This is, however, not the only one. Often we Look at other composites. So um, we might look at where we have this near infrared as our red, and then the red as green and the green as blue. So this is typically these false color ones are made to emphasize something specifically. And this one is very good at identifying meditation. And we'll talk later about why looking at red and near infrared is important when looking at meditation. So our near infrared band is, um, if we look at that, is our so near infrared is out here. So that in our case is band four. So here, up oh, band five. So uh, I was looking at in the lens at seven. So then set eight, we have near infrared in band five. So we have been interested in looking at band five, four, and three. So band five, four, and three as a band combination. So we go into QGIS and change the bands here. So now I'll look at band five, band four, and band three. 
this will give me a, as I said, false color. So the f not doesn't look like if we were looking looking down from the satellite airplane. It has some different, but you can see that all these red colors emphasizing vegetation, especially if we um, go and look a bit closer in Copenhagen here, you can see how much more vegetation we have out in Frederiksberg compared to Vesterbro region. So um, there's lots of f tricks in order to uh, emphasize special aspects that you'll be. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I'll zoom out here. Um, that you might be looking for by combining different bands in different ways to see vegetation or urban sprawl or heat, as we will be looking at in a moment. So, um, one of the key things to remember when um, oops, we are looking at um, at satellite data is that it is data. It's um, it's not um, it's not images. It's not pictures, if you wish. Um, it's recorded data, and we can manipulate them. One way of manipulating is to display them as a true color where we assign the red band from the satellite to the red color on our monitor, the green from the satellite to green, the blue to the blue, or we can choose, as in this last case, where I use the near infrared and the red and the green as the bands I was looking at. So satellite images are really satellite data that we can visualize as image. The other thing to remember when working with images in QGIS that is, independent on whether they are from satellites, they are from airplanes, or from drones, or even things taken by hand camera, is that we really often need to do contrast stretching. So the thing about going into the properties and setting them in maps to some form of cutting off the, the extremes to focus on their information is a typical important part of visualizing um, image data in QGIS. So, this was this for this uh, short video on how to visualize um, images, in this case, satellite, Landsat 8, um, satellites in QGIS. And later we will start doing calculations and other fancy things on it. So thank you for watching.